Hey everyone, welcome to our Tuesday Talks. I hope you are having an amazing week so far, making moves, making deals, making money, all that good stuff. And, and now that is coming to an end, come enjoy, comment, listen, digest uh, the conversation for the evening as we will be talking about situationships tonight. One of my favorite topics. I don't know if I'm going to say favorite topics. One of my uh, favorite topics to talk about because so many of us have been in them, um, still in them for some for some people. Want to know how to get out of them? Want to know to want to know if they are actually in one? <laughs> so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about situationships, what they are, how to identify if you are in a situationship, and. Why so many successful women, despite having all this knowledge, being extremely intelligent, having everything else together, why successful women are subject to be in situationships, even though they know they deserve better and want better? If you don't know who I am by now, again, my name is Tamika Michelle Johnson, a.k.a the matchmaking attorney to learn more about our services with Platinum Connections, which is an exclusive matchmaking, matchmaking agency for successful professionals. Feel free and I encourage you to visit the website at myplatinumconnections.com. So yeah, let's get started. Let's talk about situationships. <laughs> you know, if anyone, if any of you all know my story, um, yeah, I've, I've had a situationship. I've had um, an unhealthy relationship as well. Um, I've had both of them with the same person, <laughs> interestingly enough. Um, so, and I, I know so many women, again, who are in them now. Um, and there is a difference between a situationship and an unhealthy relationship. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but let's start off just talking about what a situationship is. And if you have a different term, if you think we should add something to this definition, please put it in the chat. Let me know. So I have personally defined situationships. This is for people who are 30 and up because trust me, the, the definition is different if you are a little bit younger. Um, I remember asking my daughter a while back like, what a situationship is. And she was just like, oh, it's just someone that you're like kind of talking to and not and um, just kind of kicking it. And, but it wasn't a real defined uh, definition. So um, for those of you who are 30 and up situationship, so I define it. Um, it is an undefined romantic relationship that is more than friends with benefits, but is less than a committed or exclusive relationship. And I actually added a timeline to that. I said, you know, if this has gone on for six or more months and um this situation, it kind of resembles a relationship, right? You usually talk often, maybe several times a day, frequently. Um, you date, you go out, you may enjoy trips with one another. Um, you may have even met the other person's family member. Some people have children <laughs> with people that they are having situationships. Um, but despite all of this going on, um, there isn't a specific label on the relationship. Um and you just been kind of going with the flow, seeing how things will turn out and what's going to happen. And and before I go any further, I just I do want to address that a little bit um, because I've seen so many women as of recent who are going with the flow, right? They're like, I don't really want to stress this guy. I don't want to push them into something. And so I'm just kind of going with the flow and just letting things happen. Um, and that seems really cool to do, except you're not establishing any boundaries and you're letting this, this man know that it's okay to kind of do his own thing and not have to commit to you. Understand this men like women respect women with boundaries. Um, not anyone, not someone who's just going to let them do whatever they want to do anytime they want to do it or, um, if they get caught up in a situation, you keep on forgiving them over and over and over and over again. So 
while that whole I'm just going to be super cool, super open, talk about everything and just kind of just let it happen. Those are the relationships that end up being situationships because you start catching feelings. Again, in a situationship is usually um, you are sexually active and so you have that going on. And so as women, eventually at some point, if you're sleeping with someone, you, you're going to catch feelings. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's even if you try to deny it. I know many of you have <laughs> probably are doing it now. Um, you'll eventually start catching feelings. And and that's okay with, with most people. Um, if you're not catching feelings, that totally is not the person that, that is meant for you. Um, so yeah, just that whole going with the flow, just kind of check that. Because that may be hindering you from actually being in relationships down the line. So... When I look at what a situation looks like, let me give you five signs of what a situation looks situationship looks like and if you're in one. So the first thing is going to be um, if you're interested in a relationship with someone and you want to talk to them about it. And that other person is like avoiding that conversation like the plague. Like they either always have something to do, they cut the com- they cut the conversation short. Um, sometimes you might even get a little bit of, of an attitude. Um, basically all together, they, they're avoiding the situation of having a discussion about being, being in a committed relationship. Oh, this is not the time, or let's talk about it later, or, you know, why are you stressing me? <laughs> like things like that. So it's just, you know, overall, again, the avoidance of having that conversation. Um, that may be, you know, a big sign that is a big sign that you're in a situation ship. Um, if someone cares about you, they do value you, they'll have that conversation with you. Um, whether whether they do want to have a relationship with you or or not. If they respect you, they'll have that relationship. They have, they'll have a discussion. But if they're always avoiding the discussion, they're not interested in pursuing a relationship with you. And they just don't want to straight up hurt your feelings. So um, they're taking, in a way, the nice route about it, but it's just not, it's not helping you any. So avoidance is number one. Um, Holidays and events. A lot of times you may go out with this person, um, travel together with this person. um, But when it comes to holidays, birthdays, um, other, other events, you're not present. Um, or maybe acknowledged like a day later or super early in the day to kind of get it over with. Um, but if you're not having those those interactions with family, their family, their friends um, for holidays and other important events, it's likely a situation ship. Now, that's not um, all or nothing with that one, because sometimes you are in a situation ship and you totally have been introduced to the other person's family or friends. So that's not an absolute, um, the holidays you miss, but that's just, it is a sign. Um, but again, not an absolute. So just kind of check those things. You know that, you know what your situation is, if that's the case or not. Um, the third sign that you are in a situation ship is if the other person has previously disclosed that they don't want to be in a relationship or they're not interested in a relationship, uh, whether they say I'm not ready right now, or I just got out of something or I'm still healing. Um, if they've told you that in the beginning, they are not interested in pursuing a full-blown relationship with you. Again, they may enjoy spending time with you, um, but they just kind of are keeping you at bay because you're good company or whatever benefit they're getting from the situation. Um, they have let you know. They let you know in the beginning that they weren't looking for anything, but you kind of stayed around, kind of giving them time to heal, come to their senses, because that's what it, what it really is, right? Coming to their senses. Like, how dare they not want to be in a relationship with you? You got all this, right? All of this. <laughs> um, you're just kind of waiting them out. And let's say they say that in the beginning. Six months later, you have the same discussion. They say the same thing. They're not interested in having a relationship with you. Um, again, they're playing, they're being nice. They don't want to hurt your feelings. Again, it, it could be a relationship that is filled with respect, right? That they respect you. They like you. Um, they know that you're a good person, but they just don't want to pursue a relationship with you. But there is some benefit for them. Um, they just don't want to commit to you. So, um, yeah, someone discloses that prior. 
um, when you first when you first met or somewhere along the line, believe them. If they tell you that, believe them. They're not interested um, for a long term relationship. Um, number four. <laughs> This is a good one because this, this is the situation that I was in. Situation, situation, shit. Um, when you actually are in a relationship with someone and then you break up. But either you don't cut ties completely. You still have the phone calls. You still, you know, meet each other for lunch or for a quickie during the day or whatever it is, whatever you still do. You just have not cut off um, all communication with that person. And... And then you kind of are feeling like you're pretty much back into a relationship, but not because you're not, you've not had that discussion again. If you are with a person, you broke up, but you're still continuing to see one another. Um, and you have not redefined that relationship. Um, you are not in a relationship. You are at that point in a situation. So um, that's a really tricky one because you still have feelings, your feelings are involved and you think that, okay, things are cool. Maybe that you just, you know, you kind of got back together. Just, it was just unspoken. Um, but the reality is, is that neither one of you have any obligation to one another. And for a man, if you don't have that clear defined relationship, um, he's going to see other people. So you have to constantly communicate that, um, you know, where you are in terms of your relationship with the statuses and all that. Don't take for granted the fact that you were together, didn't cut ties and it's like you're totally back together. Does not mean that you are together. You are likely in a situation. So if you are in that situation, that situation now, make sure you have a discussion um, to get clarification of where you are. And so it's not kind of going on and on and on, dragging on. And then like six months later or three months later, or a month later, he's going out with somebody else or he or she's going out with someone else or um, that comes up. You have no obligation to one another. So those, those again, those lines need to be established. Number five, it applies to situationships and relationships. But if you know that you are not If you know <laughs> that this person is not the best one for you and you don't have that clear defined relationship, um, commitment and exclusivity, and you know deep down in your heart that you fear being alone, that's why you're still here, it's probably, it, it's likely, it, it is a situation or it's an unhealthy relationship. But if there's no clear definitive relationship that you two have, then it's a situation, um, situationship, but that fear of being alone. And I talk about this often will keep us in situations that we know we deserve better in. So it just really takes the strength to acknowledge that you are in a situationship. And again, sometimes it could be that you are in an unhealthy relationship, but you're still there in the hopes that it to be something more or it'd be something better. And um, usually it doesn't happen. So, you know, it's something that, you know, you def it's a process, right? That fear of being alone because it is real. And it doesn't matter how accomplished you are, how attractive you are, how much money you are. I'm sorry, how much money you have. Um, that fear of being alone is, is paralyzing. And it's a process to get out. But the first step, of getting out of that is again acknowledging what situation you're in and what you deserve and heal from that um you know it may take some coaching for some people it may take some counseling for some people regardless of what it is address it right so you can move past it so you can open up your heart to someone that truly deserves you and someone that that will treat you well so those are the, the five things we have um, to determine if you're in a situation. So you have avoidance, um, not attending holidays and events. If there's been a prior disclosure that you're not interested or one person is not interested in being in a relationship. Um, if they're still healing, um, that you've broken up. Number four is that you've broken up um, and kind of not cut ties. And you think you might be back in a relationship, but you haven't had the discussion. 
um and number five the fear of being alone if you know in your gut that this is not a true relationship you're just kind of hanging on so someone else comes along um let's check that right um and if you are in a situation with someone you got to talk about it you've got to have that discussion it's going to go one of two ways right you guys notice i got the braids taken out right <laughs> um you gotta have that discussion. Communication is key in any relationship. Doesn't matter what type of relationship it is. Um, one of two things will happen: either you'll end up in a full blown relationship, and the feelings are mutual, or the feelings are not mutual. And one person wants to be in a relationship, and the other person doesn't. Either way, that is vital information, and it's something that you can do at that point. You have clarity. And clarity is gold. And it gives you the opportunity to move forward. Um, if you stay around after having that discussion and the person is not interested in pursuing anything more, um, then that's on you. You you know what comes with that. Um, but when you're ready to move on, the doors are open and there's so many other opportunities out there for you. So maybe we'll talk about Again, after you've had this discussion, right? Because you are emotionally invested. After you have this discussion and it does not go the way that you want it to, I'm going to give you a couple ways to get out of that, right? <laughs> First is acknowledgement. You need to acknowledge that it is a situation. And I know so many people who will just try to say, okay, well, one of those five things that you first mentioned that doesn't apply to me or all of them don't apply to me, like you'll just make an excuse as to why your your relationship is not a situation ship. But at the end of the day, your gut knows, you know if it's a situation ship or not. But you you just need to acknowledge the fact that it is a situation ship. You have to ask things like, what are we? Are we together? Where is this going? And you do it once, you do it twice, you do it several times, you question it all the time. You're just not sure. Um you're in a situation ship. So just, you know, acknowledging it. That's, that's the goal as well, right? <laughs> acknowledging that you're in a situation because now you can make a decision and that's right. Um, communicate, uh, again, why you're interested in this person, why you would like to pursue a relationship with this person. Um, if you want to take it to the next level, you just, again, you have to communicate that with the other person you have to communicate how you feel where you stand where you would like this to go and then when i say have a conversation about it you let them know what your intent is and then don't get mad don't get angry don't get upset um let the other person express how they feel because when you approach someone and that you're calm and you're level-headed um they'll listen to you right they'll listen to you and then they will reciprocate back they'll they'll let you know how they're truly feeling and so you don't want to attack anyone you just want to have an open conversation like hey you know we've been seeing each other for so long you know i really like you um you know i like to date exclusively um i know we're not together now but i just like it to be you and i and if that person says yeah you know let's let's try it great right um if they say, no, you know, I'm not, you know, I really do like you. I respect you. But again, if they say I'm not ready or, um, no, I'm not there, then respect that. And again, that gives you the opportunity to, to move on. Um, don't get angry. Don't get upset. Let them be honest. Let them be honest about their motives and intentions and intentions. And because the reason why a lot of people, you know, avoid the conversation is because they don't want to get badgered they don't want to you know be asked well why aren't you interested in like no one wants that just respect their feelings and that's okay everyone is not for you and you are not for everyone and that's a great thing um so just having that open conversation as to where this is going um and seeing where you stand is 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 awesome right again then after you have that the conversation you have to decide what you want to do um do you want to hang around or do you want to move on very, very simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Do you want to stay around? Do you want to waste any more time? Do you want to waste more months, more years? 
in this trying to figure out what's going to happen? Or do you want to open yourself up to the possibility, a, a good possibility of meeting a, a great and amazing person that you, that you deserve? So, you know, you know what to do um, at the end of the day. It's just making that decision. And, and I don't want to make light of it because it's hard. Again, when those feelings are involved, it's hard. If their children are involved, I mean, you really like this person, it's hard. But you have to make a decision because, you know, for most people that I work with, a lot of the women that I know, we're not getting any younger. We're getting 40. Oh, but for, you know, I'm well into my 40s now. But you don't have a lot of time. Um, and the sooner that you can make the decision to move on, the better. Now, listen, if you move on, There'll be some cases when you actually do move on, you decide to move on, like, okay, I deserve better. But this person may come come back and say, you know what? I am missing out on a great and amazing person. Let me rethink this decision. And they might come back. There's a possibility. If they do, that's great. If not, you have opened yourself up to other possibilities. And, and it's really hard, like, right? If you're in a situation, you have kids and you don't want to date and, and go out and do all this other stuff with, with people and start all over. Like I get that because I was there. Trust and believe I was there. But um, making that decision for me was really, really hard. Um, but it felt so right, right? And then shortly after, you know, married kids and, you know, all that. But after 40, I wish I would have made the decision like 10 years before that. <laughs> at least maybe like even five, right? So I wasn't having kids at 41 and 43. I could have been having those kids at 35 and 37. Anyway, that's another story for another day. <laughs> um, so um, I want to almost close out with why so many successful women fall victim to situationships. Because again, there are women, the women that I know, and I was in this in this position where you know, your your career is going well, um, your business is doing well, um, finances are great. But the love, love dating relationships area of your life is is not doing the same thing. And the reason why many successful women, why many accomplished women, why so many professional women fall prey to situationships is because they have what I term as that Midas touch mentality. And that Midas touch mentality is because every obstacle that has come your way, every challenge that has come your way, every barrier that was in your way, you have overcome it. And so now you've got that mindset, again, you're a boss and you are, I'm not going to take that away. Um, and that you can change the situation as well. You can make it into a real relationship. But I think a lot of times is because we're so busy and we're so tired at the end of the day, a lot of times, we don't want to have those serious conversations. We just kind of want to, we just want the relationship part of our lives just to happen and just be good um, without having those difficult conversations. And, and so we just kind of let things go on and on and on, thinking that one, they will realize what a bomb ass woman that you are. Um, and they'll get it together or that, you know, they'll be like, Hey, what's going on? Or they'll, you know, come with you, come to you with a commitment or a proposal for a commitment, um, or ring or marriage and all that. So you're just giving them time. But we think that even in the beginning, if this is a big one, if a man has disclosed when you first met them, that they're not interested or looking for a relationship, and you still kind of stay around, you think, okay, well, that's cool. Like, we don't need to be in a relationship right now. But I'm going to turn this into a successful relationship because we've succeeded in every other area of our lives. We're used to winning and we're going to win in this, especially if somebody that, that we like. Um, especially... You know, if you're active, sexually active with someone and that area of, the life of, of your relationship is good um, and you can talk on a certain level about different things, um, you just think that he'll just kind of come around. Um, I think that 
for a lot of successful women, a lot of accomplished women. Um, it's hard to understand why a man would not want you. And you are a cream of the crop, right? Um, the best of the best. And do not want to accept that this person may not want you. Um, do and then and then if you're in a situation for a long time, you don't want to think that you've invested this time and it's been a waste. So you're like, nope, not giving up. <laughs> nope, not giving up. And then it's like months later, years later, because you have this mindset touch mentality, like everything turns to gold, but it does not work in relationships. So that is my theory as to why um so many successful women end up being in situationships uh, because at first it's kind of like, okay, well, I don't need to push it. We don't need to, but eventually he's going to gonna come around. But if you don't put that time into it, have those, those discussions um, about relationship, getting to know one another, um, you're going to end up in, in a situation where that person is still probably seeing and dating other people and sleeping with other people. So at the end of the day, it's, you know, always vital regardless to have those conversations, um, in the beginning, some months in, you know, I say give it some months before you have those conversations because you should be dating several people anyway before you are in an exclusive relationship. I think you should date um, at least six months with someone. And then at six months, you could say, okay, let's, let's, let's talk. Where's this going? Right. Um, you know, I'm huge on being intentional. Um, you have been intentional about everything in your life. You have been intentional about going to school, getting your education, opening your business, becoming successful, making six, seven figures. Um, you've been intentional about all those things and taking the necessary courses or trainings to get you there. And as always, it takes the same thing with dating and relationships. You have to be intentional about it. Um, if you are intentional, if you're ready to be intentional, you know, I definitely have some more tips um, about being intentional, what you can do and how to level up your dating, how to get more dates. Um, at the end of the day, it comes down to practice, 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 <laughs> getting comfortable with dating, um, not just um, getting fixated with the first person that you really like. That's the thing that we do a lot of times. It, let's say you're meeting someone online, you're talking to, you meet a couple people, two, three people. And then the one that you, you know, think that you really, really like for whatever reason, you kind of focus your attention on that person and let the other ones go. And that's a huge no, no. Right. Um, keep your options open. Keep your options open. Do not sleep with everyone. Let's not do that. But keep your options open. Keep your dating options open. Um, and when you're ready to, again, when you're ready to be intentional about dating and you want to know a little bit more about the services that we offer at Platinum Connections, book an information session. It doesn't cost you anything just to see how we work, talk about prices, the, proce the process, and prospects how we get you there, how we transform you from successful and single to marvelous and married. Um, you can book that session online. It's on the homepage of the website, so mypartnerconnections.com. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's about it. Again, I, I hope you all have a wonderful week, um, remainder of the week. And next week, we are going to be talking about a few reasons why so many successful women, especially women of color, are still single. Why, again, these perfect on paper, we perfect on paper women, <laughs> not just paper in real life too, right? <laughs> um, perfect on paper. Why, why so many are still single? 50% um, of black Americans have never been married. That's compared to 28% of white Americans who have 
that is a marriage. It's a huge gap. It's a huge difference. And there's a disconnect there. And so it's important to figure out why. Why is this like this? And some of you may have been married. Um, some of you may not have been, or, or some people you just may have been single or unmarried for a really long time. We're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to start deep diving into, again, seriously, why, what's holding us back from having these relationships that we absolutely deserve. We've done all the right things growing up, checked all the boxes, but single and not able to share all this with someone special. So let's get you there. Again, um, you visit the website, myplatinumconnections.com. Again, um, we launched the magazine, Platinum Magazine. Check that out as well. You can find it on the website or platinummagazine.online. If you are an entrepreneur, um, have a business and would like to be featured, all the information is on the website as well. I'd love to feature some of you, um, get you on the cover. Um, get you that exposure. It's been a, it's been great so far, the magazine. So love to get you if you want to advertise in there or be featured. All the information is on the website as well. So um, again, until then, have a great week. And I will see you next Tuesday at 7 p.m. And talk to you soon. Bye.